Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I hope you got your boxing gloves off because I'm going to show you how to make some cool combos in Combo Clash. This is a game from We Are Hub Games. It's from two to four players around 20 to 40 minutes and from 10 years and above. And it's about you trying to use these animals best actions to do the best and biggest combinations. That's right, fighting combination. They all have unique combinations that you need to use to really score the biggest scores. Place the tiles and try to figure out how to use your own but also your opponent's tiles to make some cool combinations here. So I'm going to show you the setup of this game, I'm going to show you the gameplay of it and go through some of the rules. Let's have a look at it. First thing you need to do is to put out the little gaming area here in the center of the table. And this is quite cool because this is textile, it's not plastic, it's not cardboard, it's, it's, a, it's a cool little textile feature here to put in the center of the playing area for everyone to reach. Then you need to take the tiles and mix them together real good and place them in the center area where you see the logo of Combo Clash. Then you need to take the four top tiles and place them in each corner of the playing area. The goal of combo class is of course to score combos and get scores. So at the start of your game you should decide if you want a quick, standard or long game. A quick game if it is 50 points, a standard game is 75 points and a long game is 100 points. Now the player needs to draw 5 tiles each before they start the gameplay. You can discard these tiles one time if you do not like them and put them face down on the table in front of you. Each player should also get a reference tile. Just remember to include the one that has the number one down here in the corner as this one will determine who will be the first player. This one should of course be handed out without anyone knowing what they actually get. I got the first player though. The last thing we need to do is to hand out a score tracker to each player, placing them down in the corner where the scoring track starts. Combo class is played during multiple rounds and starts with, well, the first player, which is me, of course, and then go clockwise around the table. Each player can play one or more tiles at their turn, trying to use their animal and trying to use their unique abilities the best way that they possibly can. If we take a look at some of the tiles, you will see that there are different symbols on them. The symbols you have up here in the left corner, this is this creature's special ability. In the other corner you will see a number. These numbers are used to calculate the score you get when using this creature's combo. There is one exception though and that is the chameleon. This one does not have a special ability in its corner and it does not have a combo score because this one will use the other creature's abilities and scores instead. The first thing you can choose to do on your turn is to play a tile. The way you do this is that you take the tile that you want to play and you place it face up on the board but it needs to be next to either a face up tile or a face down tile on the playing area. Could also be next to the draw pile here. And it needs to be placed side by side. So you cannot place it diagonal. You need to place it next to another tile. The next thing you need to do is to figure out if you want to trigger your creature's ability or not. If you choose to do it, you do it immediately now. And if you choose not to, well, you can't use it later either. But what do the different abilities do, Richard? Well, they do a lot of different things. The wolf, for example, lets you to score one point for each wolf on the board. The kangaroo lets you move one up or face down tile to one adjacent space on the board. The raven lets you pick up a new card from the draw pile. 
The snake, this one is quite cool. You place this one above another tile on the board and then you get to take the tile that is below. The crocodile lets you to flip down one or two cards on the board. Flip them face down, that is. And this one, the vulture, lets you flip up a card again. So it will flip them back. The big King Kong here, or the gorilla as it is, lets you scatter cards. Meaning that you get to discard the tiles in your hand and draw new ones in the same amount. And then we have the last one, the chameleon that I showed you before. This one does not have a score or a special ability in the way that the other do. This one will mimic the other abilities that are adjacent to it. Next thing you can do on your turn is to score a combo. If you have three or more of the same type of creature connected side by side, you will be able to score their combo. And it doesn't need to be this formation, it could also be in another pattern, as long as they are connected side by side and not diagonal. And remember, you can always use the chameleon to enhance your scores. This one, for example, would give you 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 scores, as the chameleon will adapt the gorilla's abilities. If the board ever gets full and there's nowhere to place your tile anymore, you need to clear the board. Meaning that you should remove all the face down tile and discard them. But if there are no face down tiles, you keep the ones out in the corners and discard all the other face up cards on the board. The game ends when one or more player reaches or exceeds the predetermined target score that we all agreed upon at the start of the game. Remember we said 50 for a fast game, 75 for a standard game and 100 points for a long game. Meaning that when you reach that score or exceed it, you go that final round so everybody gets to make their last moves and then the one that has the highest scores wins. Which, which is me right now. So there you have it people, that was Combo Clash for you. This is a travel size small game from We Are Hub Games for 2 to 4 players. And it says 10 years on the box, but my son is 7 and he would have no trouble at all learning or playing this game. It's quite easy, it's quite fun and it's quite fast. The only thing that you really need to pay attention to is the different combinations and the different abilities that each creature have. That takes a little bit of time to learn, but the symbols will really help you out and make it easy for you. So check it out, there will be links down here in the description if you like this video to read more about it. If you like this video, please support me by hit the subscribe button down below and show me some love. Maybe throw in a comment to me here, which animal would you like to be? And what ability would you like to have? I would like to be a fl flame throwing lizard. That would be awesome. So until next week, people, please take care. Show some love out there. Spread the board game love. The community is great. I love it. And I'm so proud to be a part of it. Take care.